Chapter 7, Part 2. Now we're going to look at margin of safety, operating leverage, and what happens if you have multiple products. So, common indicators of risk is the margin of safety. That's a great one. Tells you how much your sales have to fall before you start losing money. It's the excess of expected sales over break-even sales. Operating leverage is going to tell you how much your uh, sales are going to uh, change in terms of your uh, total sales. Margin of safety is the excess of expected sales over break-even. Drop in sales that the company can absorb before incurring loss. Used to evaluate the risk of current operations as well as the risk of new plans. So again, margin of safety in units or dollars is uh, for units, it's expected sales minus break even in both cases. So we'll look at an example. Again, margin of safety is a percentage. You can either take use units or you can use dollars. So now we're going to look at a problem. In this example, someone is going to set up a booth at a fair. We have fixed costs and we have variable costs and we first need to segregate all of those. So first we identify all the fixed and variable costs. So the ground fees, we're only going to have one booth and that's going to be the same booth over the same period of time. So that's a fixed cost. The percentage of food sales, that's going to be variable because although we're estimating an average of 4,000 a day, that could go up or down and we pay it based on actual volume. Now the permit stays the same, the wattage is the same, the, the $30 for 12 days stays the same, but remember you get one free. And then the salary on the poise, you have four salaries, that's fixed. And again, the parking fees are fixed. So now that we've separated those, let's assuming that Mike reaches his sales goals, what amount would he have to pay the fare? Well, we've got our variable fees and our fixed fees. So if we assume, okay, so the total fees for the 12 days is 13380 based on the sales volume. And in order for us to uh, break even, we'd have to have $46,320 in sales. What's our margin of safety? Well, we know that for 12 days at $4,000, we're going to make $48,000, and our break even is $46,320, so we don't really get very much. $1,680, what is the margin of safety as a percentage of sales? 3.5%. Now let's take a look. What does that really mean? Well, it means that if the sales drop by more than $140 per day, they will lose money. So if their estimate of $4,000 a day in sales is high, then they may not want to do the fair because their margin of safety requires that they have to have a very high volume. Now let's take a look at operating leverage. How responsive a company's operating income is to changes in volumes. Lowest possible factor is one, which means the company has no fixed costs. So it's contribution margin divided by operating income. So high operating leverage, the high operating leverage companies like car manufacturers, higher levels of fixed costs and low levels of variable costs. That means once they're able to cover their fixed costs, they make a lot of money. But if they don't cover the fixed costs, they lose a lot of money, which is true in the car companies or the airlines. Now, they have high contribution margin ratios, they have higher risk, and higher potential for rewards. Low operating leverage. Low operating leverage companies have high levels of variable costs and lower levels of fixed costs. Lower contribution margin ratios. 
For low operating leverage companies, changes in volume do not have a significant an effect on operating income. Lower risk, lower potential for rewards, however, it means they have to have high volume. Example would be a clothing or food store. So now let's take a look at an example. Now Mike makes headphones. Uh, the relevant range is 0 to 200. The current volume is 130,000 units. They sell them for $20. Here are their variable costs. Here are fixed costs. What is the contribution margin per unit and contribution margin percentage and total contribution margin? So we have our sales price less our variable cost totaling $17.50 which gives us a contribution margin per unit of $2.50. Now for the rest of the problem, we're going to work the same problem through the rest of the chapter. Um, remember that that's $17.50 and that's $290.100. Now, the contribution margin ratio is 12.5%, but in some parts I use 13%. It's just the way they work this problem. I don't know why. I don't know why they just didn't use 12.5%, but they don't. So to get the answers, I will tell you when you use what percentage. And the total contribution margin is, see, I'm using 0.125, is $325. So that's the total contribution margin. So what does that mean? It means for every time we make a sale, we keep 12 and a half cents. That's not very much. That's because we have high variable costs. What would the company's operating income be at 160,000 units? So we take the contribution margin, which is to come up with that, we take the sales volume times the contribution margin of 250 minus the fixed costs. So what if we had operating income if sales would be 4 million five? Well, we'd use the contribution margin ratio to get our contribution margin minus the fixed cost, and that would give us our operating even. What is the break-even point in units and dollars? We would take fixed expenses divided by the contribution margin, so that tells us to break even, we need 116,040 units to break even. What is it in dollars? It's going to be 290,100, which is our fixed cost with zero profit, divided by 13% gives you your 2,231,539. Now, how many units would be needed to make the monthly profit of 260,100? We would again take our fixed cost, but we'd add on the profit. Divided by 250 would tell us we need to sell 220,080 units. What if labor costs go up 10% and fixed costs increase by 22,500? What is the new break even? Well, first we have to come up with our total variable cost per unit. Now we have a new contribution margin per unit. So break even now in units with the higher. A fixed cost of 22500 we have to add those on. With the lower, now if you notice, um, break-even is going to be 173,667 units. Now, what is the company's operating leverage? Well, we're going to take sales at our 130,000 units, less our variable. Gives our contribution margin, less operating expenses, give us our operating income. So we're going to take our contribution margin and we're going to divide by our operating income and it tells our leverage is 9.31. What does that mean? It means if sales volume increases by 7%, our operating income is going to increase by 65.2%. Now, what is the margin of safety in dollars as a percentage of sales? Break even, we have to first figure that out. 
Then we take sales minus break even tells us our sales can drop by $368,461 before we start losing money. Margin and safety as a percentage. Okay, again, that tells you that your sales can drop 14% before you start losing money. Now, what about if we have multiple products? Sales mix, combination of products that make up total sales. All else equal, company earns more operating income by selling high contribution margin products. Weighted average contribution margin, we're going to weigh each contribution margin by the relative number of units sold. So again, we have the same problem, but what if we decide to add a product that now we can sell for 45, but it has variable cost of 28? The sales mix is going to be six of the $20 units for every one of the $45 units. Now, how many of each type do you want to sell? Do you have to sell to make profits of 260,100? So first, we have to compute the weighted average contribution margin per unit. So in this case, it's $2.50 for product A, and it's $17 for product B, which is much better. Now we divide, take it times the sales mix, so that gives us a weighted average contribution margin. We then divide by the total number of units, divided by the total contribution margin, so we're saying the weighted average is $4.57. So now we're going to determine total sales to get operating income of 260. And it's going to be, we're going to have to produce 120,394. How many of each type? Product A, we're going to take 6 sevenths times 120, 394 units. So we're going to have to produce, sell 103, 195 of those at 20. And we're going to have to sell 17,199 of units of the $45 priced ones. Now let's take one more look here. How many units would you have to sell if you were only doing product A? Well, you'd have to sell a lot more units. And the reason is, is that the variable costs are higher on unit A. The lower the variable costs, the um, less you're going to have to sell. So that concludes Chapter 7.